so um drive shaft as you can see it's in um so the issue i had was when i went on a test drive just to see how it drove um i actually have too much pinion angle um the pinion angle on this is uh 8.9 degrees up uh over at my transmission it's like uh i want to say like 3.5 down but that's because my dirty dingo cross member i didn't adjust properly so it's out of alignment the way that i knew that is once i get up to about 70 miles an hour um it kind of shakes a bit from i want to say pretty much 70 on so from 70 on i get a vibration and the vibration is more like a uh, i want to say a pulsing like a in and out pulsation and the faster i go the worse it gets but apparently that's associated with angle i went to go check my angle my angle it, it doesn't work so we have uh the six degree shims so the goal is to put this under the uh between the leaf spring itself and the uh the actual perch on the uh rear and this will make the um the snout of the transmission angle downward a bit about six degrees so that'll put me at around 2.8 2.9 three degrees up instead of nine 8.9 degrees up so that should take away the vibration so these i want to say um one of them came up started coming loose on this side the other side is rock solid not moving same thing on this side one came loose one didn't so now i'm just going to uh just get the grinder and um just cut them off already got new hardware before i even started this just in case Okay, so I'm sitting over here and I realized uh, this is probably a vein and I've done this before. I actually did this with my transmission cross member. I ended up taking a cross member, cleaning it up, taking, doing so many hours, well not hours, but it took a lot of time, effort, elbow grease to like get the rust and whatnot off of the cross member. And then I painted it, made it look good, literally just to swap it out. Maybe, I don't know, like a month later, two months later. So it was i'm thinking of that as like wasted effort at this point so now i'm kind of in a similar boat this bracket uh this is fine um cleaned it up a bit going to paint it with some roll bar chassis paint i was going to do the same thing to this 
but was kind of getting me and i was like oh i'm not gonna order a new one i don't need it word of advice just do it that's just some of the rust and cancer that i got out of here there's actually more on the ground over by the truck but the more i'm sitting here trying to chip away chip away if i have any luck whatsoever which i haven't had much of the fedex man should be here with my cow tracks so what i think i'm going to do i'm just going to put the bottom bolt bottom pleat of the cow tracks on that's going to hold the rear and um and let it be that so i don't that's less labor for me to do later when i put the rest of the cow track on and i don't have to clean this up worst case scenario if he doesn't i'm not even going to clean these up anymore i'm just going to put it in temporarily literally because it'll only be on for like maybe a few weeks and then uh swap it out all right so here's the next thing um actually cleaned up around the area um nothing crazy just cleaned it up with the uh, the wire wheel and uh clean up around the bolt hit the bolt with some penetrating oil uh letting it sit at the moment hopefully i'll be able to just grab the bottom because as you know these axle i said axle these um leaf spring uh center bolts they are matter of fact i have one here the leaf spring center bolts don't have like a, a hex head or anything like that they're just like a smooth dowel i want to say at the end and that's what kind of goes into the um the seat uh, uh, where the leaf spring sits at on the axle to kind of center it so hopefully get some grips on it on the one that's in here and be able to zip this off and i got the clamps here very important these clamps help you well help the leaf kind of not just wah, and just separate super hard super fast and it's really hard to align i found that out dealing with my suburban when i put the lift kit on it got the leaves powder coated that was that's a whole nother story but anyway um the goal now hopefully the other side is still intact never took anything apart i'm going to try to lower the bit rear a bit um hopefully me just lowering it from the center will allow the axle now to separate from the leaf once we do that then i have access to the dowel so we'll see okay i'm a jackass <sighs> the rear can't go anywhere if the shock's hooked up right duh Okay, let's try this again. Uh, shock disconnected. There we go. Almost didn't catch it. Whoo. That release was a little, a little quick. <laughs> All right. All right. So now we have. I got the vice grip on. Grab it. Hopefully, this will be um, enough. And I'm gonna just hit it with the gun. See if it'll loosen up for me. All right, so it's loose. I can feel it, but we uh, lost our grip. Here we go, spinning. It's spinning. And it's spinning lets me know that these clamps are doing their job because it's not just popping out and just uh, separating. So, or honestly, it could just be the rust over the years and it's just, you know, seized together. Um, either way, I'm not gonna sit here too long. Um, get another grip, get it off, and uh, get it doing it.
Yeah, I'm cut the top. I'm cut the top. Rear's got to go down to get the bolt out. There we go. Right up. Boom. All right, there it is. It's out. And now to, uh, let's see what I'm gonna do here. I'm going to uh, install the new bolt, which definitely is gonna have to be cut, it's too long. Uh, and the new bolt, from Western Chassis, it comes with a spacer. The spacer here. This spacer helps it stick out beyond the length of the wedge. Let me see if I can try to make it make sense here. So, what's that? This needs to protrude a certain amount in order to bite into the uh, rear diff. I mean, not rear diff, into the axle. So that's what this spacer's for. Because if not, it'd probably be flush and the dowel wouldn't actually go into the pin of the uh, mounting flange. So I'm gonna just clean this area up and get the new bolt installed. All right, so uh, now the new bolt's installed. This uh, definitely a little long and I actually cut like a small tip of the top to um, be able to get it in from the bottom. So uh, yeah, now it's in, uh, tighten it up, and I'm just gonna clean this area up that I'm not gonna be able to get to again later, and um, paint it. Okay, so FedEx for the win today. Um, they showed up. So this is what I meant, kind of like where I just left off at was, um, these were coming anyway. Um, I don't have to fully install the cow track. So I'm just taking pretty much the hind joint out and putting, um, well, yeah, putting the hind joint out and putting this on the base. These are the old ones that were like horrible, horrible. Um, so I just put these on. So here's kind of a somewhat of a fast forward, but it's cool because I'm not, I'm not done the other side yet. So I'm still gonna explain. I just wanted to kind of work some bugs out on this side. So that way, um, on the other side, it goes smoother and I can explain it a little better. So this side is on, I snugged it up. Not sure if it's gonna seat the way it's supposed to. Uh, common problem with these, if it rusts too bad, the axle tubing itself has some serious cancer on it to the point where I have a leak. Now this leak, it looks super bad, but that's because the axle itself was actually tilted down to the right. So the fluid was coming toward this end, making a lot of it come out. So, oh uh, yeah, where the factory perch sits, there's kind of like a pouch in there. And that pouch on the factory one holds water, which is horrible. So what Caltrack did to help um, counteract that was they actually, put holes on the sides so that way it has somewhere to escape so it doesn't build up in there as much uh so on these there is nowhere for it to escape the water will just sit and pool i mean it'll slowly go out through where the bolts are but things are so snug it does it slowly so uh 
here we are on this side. So basically what I did here is now I just cleaned up the area a bit, cleaned up the perch, um, and cleaned up the spring. New bolt is already in on this side. We already made it to that point on the other side. So the only thing different about this side is that it's cleaned up, it's painted, and now you're going to see this here from Western Chassis that goes in to help continue to angle, and you can probably see it on camera, the rear is now, I wanna say angled down a bit, which is what I need. So instead of being up, it's down a little bit. Hopefully it gets rid of that vibration. So the other side's in, um, going to get the hardware on on this side and snug it up. But just so you know, when it comes to these wedges, uh, if you want to raise the pinion angle, the bulky part would probably be to the back and um, that would actually raise the pinion angle. But we are trying to lower the pinion angle. So this is gonna make the snap go down by having it on the front side. So just gonna get the hardware, get it in place and uh, start snugging up. Okay, so from here, um, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, from what you saw, everything was cleaned up, painted. Uh, all I did from here, um, put the shim in the direction uh, that I had sat it in, and which is the big side to the front, so that way it takes the snout down. And after that, I just put my plate back up here, the factory plate, just cleaned it up, painted it just like everything else. And I put the bolts, uh, U-bolts down in place, and snubbed them up. So now, all I'm gonna do, just to double check, I'm gonna double check the other side. And once I double check the other side, I'm going to uh, just get a torque wrench, just to be on the safe side, why not? Even though I zipped them uh, with a gun, I'm just gonna go and make sure they're probably around like 100 foot pounds, 80 foot pounds. I'll Google it and see which one to go. But uh, once those are tightened up, um, that's pretty much it. Ready to put the wheels on and see if I get a vibration at 80 miles an hour. Okay, so now that I have my uh, rear uh, shims in place, um, pinion angle's been corrected to definitely closer to where it needs to be. Even though it's a six degree, um, they actually gave me about, I went from 8.9 to about 2.3. So they're not perfect. So they're not gonna give you exact like dead on. That's what it is because I mean, that's almost impossible to manufacture it that way. I mean, maybe it is, who knows? By the way, that works out great for me. That's even better. Cause they didn't have a seven degree, which is what I would have gotten. So worked out fantastic. So anyway, now the pinion angle in the rear pinions, the snout is up about, um, it's about up 2.3 degrees. The angle of the shaft is about uh, 1.3, something like that. So that's all good so far. My issue is the actual transmission itself. So um, I also, another thing I noticed is I'm not even sure it looks like I have less engagement with the um, into the transmission. I don't know if it's because the angle I'm on, but I had more engagement when the pinion angle was where it was. I'm not sure if it's because now that the pinion angle is down a few degrees that it pulls some of it out, but that's definitely something that I'm gonna have to uh, revisit. I'm probably gonna end up, uh, since there's so much trial and error, making getting somebody to make me another one of these. Um, probably out of steel, because that's the closest person I have to me, works with steel. The other guy, uh, he moved and did his own thing, and I have no idea where he went. And he welds aluminum, so he would be able to you know, modify it for me. But anyway, with this dirty dingo cross member, I was never sure exactly um, where to set this up because it's adjustable. Of course, with the factory one, it sits where it sits and that's it, you don't have a choice. But this one is adjustable. So I have to um, adjust this until I get the angle on here where I want it to be. So in the front of the car, I have my angle finder on the crank. Um, I'm getting about like 4.5 degrees down. So I need to get that to about two degrees down, 2.5, somewhere around there. So I'm just gonna loosen these up, jack it up. Um, and after I jack it, I'm gonna get up, go check and look to see where it's at. Once I get it where I need it to be, lock these bolts down and um, I should be rid of that vibration. 
This is the angle finder we have on the front of the crankshaft pulley. Um, at first, it started off reading around like 8.85.5, uh, somewhere around there. So it had about four, four and a half degrees down. So now I just did a couple uh, jacks on the trans and putting it back to where it was kind of around factory in the first place. But I uh, did a couple jacks on the trans and now uh, we're at 86.1. So the goal is, um, I need to get that number. I want to say I'd feel comfortable around, towards the long story short, it's about 2.5. So, um, oh, and by the way, the reason why it looks the way that it does is because since it's sitting on its side, um, you'd pretty much would take um, 90 and subtract this number from 90 and that would give you what you currently have. So. I'm just gonna come around, it's already in place. Uh, keep giving it a couple of pumps and come back and check to see where we are. So once I get it in the right place, we'll be good to go. So that just gave us uh, 86.3. So we're getting closer, inch by inch. Well, not even inch, these are really slight movements. All right, y'all, we rolling, we rolling. And it, uh, it all worked out, man, it all worked out. So um, the last thing that y'all heard me say with the, um, I wanna say the slip yoke, um, just to make myself feel better, I wanted more engagement um, as far as the slip yoke into the output shaft of the transmission. So um, I ended up going with a slip yoke that was about, I wanna say, I think it was like an inch and a half longer. So um, that definitely made me feel comfortable once I installed that. So that's what's on it now. And like I said before, took it to the guy, he um, balanced it, and that took pretty much everything away. Now I, I am, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Um, drive smooth, I got on it a few times, um, just to check it out and whatnot. And then even, um, even with getting on it, I felt comfortable. And I mean, this is definitely like a fast forward because I even got the cow tracks on. They're not dialed in yet, but um, I can even feel like those kind of engaging too. So the more and more I'm doing, it's just starting to feel more and more right, I guess you could say. Yep, so now, try to get on it a little bit. Still gotta work out the shift points, but that's a whole nother story. But, uh. Either way, yeah, man, it holds up. And like I said, this is gonna get me a long way because uh, I don't think um, I'm gonna max out as far as my uh, critical speed on this thing until about, like I said, around like eh, 6,000 RPM. So after doing the math, that gets me to about 125 miles an hour. And that's with the 390 gear ratio, uh, with the 28 inch tall tire, and, um, and with the 4L68 transmission. So if I actually make the tires bigger or taller, then I can go even faster. So um, yeah, it all worked out. So this pretty much buttons everything up. Um, also with the transmission, like I said, I mean, you won't run into that problem if you don't have the dirty dingo cross member. But if you do, uh, now you know where it should be positioned as compared to stock. Cause like I said, that's one thing that it, it just, it blew my mind. I, well, it left my mind. I didn't even think when I was swapping out the transmission um, cross members to check to see where the factory one was sitting at so that I can make sure that the adjustable dirty bingo was sitting where it was supposed to be. But um, yeah, it's all good, man. See y'all the next one.